Today I'm doing a video on the series I've been working on on TexasReady.gov. The first time we did Be Informed, then we did Make a Plan, and today is Build a Kit. I'm going to do an overview of the web page uh, right now on this video, and then on the next video will be me uh, putting together this stuff that I have that I found works best for me and our family, and uh, you can adjust your plan accordingly. So to start, at the top, Texas Ready Disaster Supply Checklist. Build your kit all at once or step by step. Start with what you already have on, at home, then shop for the rest as needed. Pack the basic supplies for each person or pet in a portable container or backpack. A waterproof container is best. You'll need these supplies whether you stay in your home, which is called sheltering in place, or evacuate to another location. Use the list below or download a PDF of the disaster supply checklist to, your, to help you be Texas ready. Um, and then you can click on this download a PDF and uh, it'll, it'll give you the same thing. All right, so food and water. Three day supply of non-perishable food such as canned or pouched food. And <clears throat> this is when it says three day supply of non-perishable food, just remember that means no electricity. So no refrigeration. Um, yeah, so basically just no refrigeration. And that can be a lot of different things. I'll show some of the stuff I have that we like, um, but just know three days is the minimum. I think it is really smart to have at least a one week supply for your group that you're wanting to be prepared for. Again, way longer is better, but at a minimum, a week is about how long it would take for hopefully power to start coming back or to know that you're needing to evacuate to another location. One gallon of water per day for each person and pet. I'm a little bit different, so um, we have had the, the opportunity to um, not have power a few times and not have water a few times in our life uh, for our small family. And what I have learned is three gallons of water per person per day is best. You have one gallon for drinking, one gallon for cooking, and one gallon for flushing. And again, those are very general terms, but um, we've learned that that number is pretty good. So we equate that to water bricks because they're about three gallons per water brick. So we like to have one water brick per person per day, and then an extra for you know miscellaneous medical supply, medical needs and stuff. Manual can opener. Again, cans aren't any good if you can't open them. Um, there's the, uh, I think the P38, I'm probably butchering that, but the, the really old school, uh, just flip out military can opener um, is a good thing to just toss in your, in your bag. The normal like $3 Walmart can opener is really good also. Um, but again, you just need to have something. And again, a knife can work well, it is very important to remember though, if you're using a folding knife, the second you hit that down, that's gonna be a shock load and that knife is gonna to wanna to bend and then you can cut yourself really bad and now you don't have food and you have a medical issue. So just be really careful if that's the route you decide to go. All right, baby items, food, baby food, formula, bottles and diapers. So um, this is one, where you have to have a lot more pre-planning or a lot more planning ahead, I guess, is um, if you're gonna do frozen milk, like breast milk and freeze it or refrigerate it, you need to have a way to keep that cold um, or plan on how you're gonna cycle through that because it's very important. Um, your formula is a different story, right? That's, it's canned, it's not a big deal. But if you're gonna do breast milk, you need to have a way to keep it fresh. And that, that could be many different avenues, but you just need a way to do that. Pet supplies, 
So this is gonna go down to this bottom one um, down here, but we will, um, We'll get to that. But as far as pet supplies go, for food and water, you wanna make sure you have enough food. Again, I'd recommend for one week. First aid, medication, hygiene supplies. So a first aid kit, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, with this, with the first aid stuff, knowledge is really, really important. So I think as a standard, I think everyone that is old enough should have the, um, uh, Red Cross or AHA or your country's equivalent first aid CPR at a minimum and then I think you should have a trauma class and a stop the bleed class in addition to that. Um, I think that is incredibly important. If you are able to, I also think it's very important to have um, like extended medical training. Um, I, I personally think an EMT basic for everyone is a great thing. I understand that's not realistic, but if you can do something like a wilderness first aid class, not necessarily just the wilderness first responder, but the more simplistic wilderness first aid, it's about improvisation, knowing stuff, being able to pay attention to, to um, biological cues of what's going on those are really smart to have because you can be very flexible with a little bit of supplies and you can catch um, medical issues hopefully before they become a bigger issue. Medications, so this is going to go back to the refrigeration thing. A lot of medications are just in the bottle, they're pill form or something, but if you're on something like insulin or some other medication that needs to be refrigerated, again, I think a one week minimum supply to be able to power some kind of refrigeration is very important. But if you are um, counting on something like insulin for like a medical need to be able to keep you alive, then um, you need to find another way to power a small refrigerator like a dorm fridge or something, um, or something equivalent. Hand sanitizer and wipes. Uh, another really important thing is just basic uh, cleanliness. You know, your hands are really good at keeping you safe as long as you keep them clean. So uh, washing, I prefer Dawn. That is my personal preference. It's a very versatile soap. Um, but hand sanitizer and wipes are a quick fix to just at least hopefully kill the bacteria and um, neutralize the viruses on your hands and stuff. Bleach, uh, to purify water, mix 1 8 teaspoon per gallon, stir and let sit for 30 minutes. This is to purify the water. And again, bleach is, is good for a whole bunch of stuff. It, it's a great thing. Toilet paper, paper towels, and garbage bags. So I'm assuming, um, since we have made it through collectively as um, through the whole COVID stuff, that everyone's very aware of the quickness, how fast uh, paper goods can go once you have an influx of your entire community to your shopping center, even if it's a Walmart or a Sam's Club. That stuff can go really fast. So, um, you know, this is obviously gonna depend on your situation. I recommend having, to, to get one of the big packages of toilet paper, seeing how long that lasts, your group, your family, and then getting enough of those packages to last for a couple of months. So for most people, that's only gonna be, uh, you know, two of those bigger Sam's or Costco size Charmin packages. And uh, so it's not like you're getting a warehouse full, right? It's, it's very realistic to have two of those ready. Um, now it might be three, but again, that, that stuff lasts a long time. Now to help with that too, um, I'm a huge proponent of wet wipes because uh, a happy bottom is a happy body. And so you can use less toilet paper, use one or two wet wipes to clean, don't flush them, toss them in the trash. And then um, your bottom is clean, you use less toilet paper, and you're prolonging your supplies. Paper towels, that's another thing. Um, I, again, this is just me, I'm a big fan of cloth napkins because you can wash them. That being said, if you're dealing with something where you know you don't have power, so no 
clothes washer, those kind of things, you always need a supply of paper towels. I don't think it should be your primary. I think you should use up your cloth ones, have enough, you know, for your normal week of whatever that looks like, and then toss them in the washer so when the power does come back on, you can wash. But you should have enough paper towels, again, I think for probably a month. But if you're using the cloth napkins, you've already uh, reduce that to three weeks and you don't need a ton right you just you need enough for meals and a little bit of cleaning to be able to uh, bleach spray some areas if you want to to clean stuff and then garbage bags so these are really important because they are very versatile just like a lot of other stuff so they can be garbage bags they can be um, ceiling around your uh, windows and doors if you need them to be. They can be ponchos in a pinch. They can be a shelter. They can be many things as long as you get the proper thick mill um, like construction trash bags. Dental care, toothpaste and toothbrushes. I would throw in those, some of those floss stick things also. And just remember if you have an electronic toothbrush, so you have a way to either have additional batteries or a way to charge it. Uh, mine's USB, so I can just plug in a USB power pack and it's not a big deal. Hearing and vision products. So hearing aids, glasses, contact lenses, contact lens solution. This is one of those things, again, you need to make sure that you have extras up. So your hearing aid, you have extra hearing aid batteries. Glasses, you have a second pair in case yours gets cracked. Contact lenses, you have an extra set, and you take care of your eyes. So it, I used to wear contacts, and it was really easy when I was a lot younger to wear them for a couple extra days and just not take them out. That is really bad for your eyes. So just know if you're in a situation that's that's a disaster kind of situation, you need to keep clean, keep your body clean. So again, happy bottom, happy body, clean teeth. That's less bacteria, bad bacteria. That's that's just better, better teeth, better gums, all that kind of stuff. Um, your eyes, you can't do too much if you can't see. And then um, contact lens solution. So this is another one of those things that can be a couple of different things. So you've got um, your contact lens solution for your contacts, but it is also a wound cleaner because you've got a, pressure, a, a small tip that you can squeeze and pressurize a saline solution to come out. And that's a really good way to clean wounds. So I'm a huge proponent, even if you don't wear contacts, to have a few of those big bottles of contact solution. Next is soaps, personal hygiene supplies, diapers. Again, this is the same thing. You know, you can go a few days without bathing. Obviously, I mean, everyone goes, well, most everyone goes camping. Um, but when you get in a situation where you are in a survival mode, trying to at least clean a little bit is going to go a long way because when you start getting sweaty and hot and pockets by your groin or armpits or other areas, if you're bigger and you have extra skin, you can get bacteria in there too. And it can cause a lot of, um, it can cause bacteria to grow, which can lead to an infection. And then again, like your teeth or eyes or anything, it's a quick drop after that. So a little bit of maintenance on the front end and helps, helps on that. Personal hygiene supplies, this is gonna be the same thing as your toothbrush, toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Uh, diapers, again, um, when our daughter was really little, Money was tight, but I still made an attempt, not always successful, but an attempt to have, um, depending how fast we went through those boxes, I had an extra, usually two boxes of diapers if I could. And that way it gave us, you know, if there was a big winter storm or something else going on or money got really tight, then we had a little bit to stretch through when we were a, a much younger family. Sunscreen insect repellent. This is going to go back to the other stuff I've discussed. If your skin is burned, it's going to be more susceptible to infection. If you get an insect bite while very remote in the Western world, you can still get different um, uh, mosquito borne diseases and that kind of thing. So it's just better to just have that as a reduced option. Um, another thing too here is, is wearing like a sun shirt. So like, like this, those Columbia, um, you know, wicking long sleeve shirts, it's sun protection and it's, it's pretty good bug repellent, you know, cause it's a long sleeve shirt. So I'm, I'm a big fan of, of long sleeve shirts over this stuff, just because it's going to last longer throughout the day. 
face mask to filter the air. Now this is not for just stuff. This is for actual meat. So this is for a true bacterial or viral airborne issue. Um, so this is where you need true N95 or one or P100 masks with true cartridges or personally this is me right I think everyone should have true gas masks per family member because they're so versatile and then not to walk out in the store right like a crazy person but if there's a legitimate concern like if there's a, a true airborne issue of, of a biological nature, it protects against that. If you live in wildfire country, it's gonna protect from the smoke inhalation. Um, if you um, live in an area like this last train derailment, and you don't know what's going on, when you see a, a big plume of smoke and a bunch of stuff out there, um, you can put in a, a sea burn filter and help protect against chemicals just until you know it's safe because there's just a lot of stuff when stuff burns like that. So, I, um, but at a minimum, a true N95 mask, not a little paper mask. Communication, lighting, document page, uh, document bag items. So you want a powered, sorry, battery powered radio with extra batteries or crank radio, emergency alert radio is best. I've done them before. I'm a huge fan of those uh, Midland Eton radios. We still have a bunch. Um, they last forever. And uh, the new ones, you can power your phone off of them. They're hand cranked. They've got a flashlight, weather radio, AM, FM radio. They're just super versatile things. And what's really important is they have an alert function, or at least the newer ones do. They have an alert function, so you can just let them sit, right? And just leave them plugged in or whatever it is you want and they'll go off for a weather alert or a government issue alert. Now, in addition to this, I think it's really important to have a, a good proper one. Um, I'll put a picture here of the one we have, but it's a Midland and it does all the alerts. It's got a nice big screen, an extraordinarily loud speaker. It will definitely wake you up and it works everywhere um, and so it's just it's a really good radio to have and it has a text line at the bottom so you can see what's going on extra cell phone battery or and car charger so i know in this day and age iphones don't have removable batteries i know a lot of galaxies and other ones do i think it's just a safe bet is to just have a usb power pack um, i did a review this last year on the goal zero one that's waterproof and super rugged with usb-c and a on it I still have mine. I think that's a good option because if you're in a situation where you're having to evacuate, you need everything you have needs to be super durable and really rugged and just plan that it's gonna be either raining or freezing or wildfire conditions outside. So you just need to plan with that accordingly with, with all the stuff you get. Car chargers, the same thing. I would recommend a car charger that's the USB style, so you can keep that battery pack on charge the whole time, um, and then have a second cord that keeps your phone charged, or have a multi one for, you know, for your family, so everyone can keep their phones plugged in while the car's running, because as soon as the car dies, or you have to leave your car, you've now lost the chance to have that electricity. So I reckon I'm a big proponent also of just keeping stuff plugged in until you need it, because you don't know when the power's gonna go out. Flashlight with extra batteries. Um, I I always carry this. This is the the Surefire. Um, I think it's Stiletto. This is like the original, the old one, but it's USB. And I've also my headlight is the Petzl. Um, I think Tactica, and it's USB also. The reason I like those is again you have that one battery pack, and you can charge your phone, your hand light, your flashlight other stuff that you might need. Um, if you get a big enough battery, you can run your laptop so you can get access to your documents. It's just an easy option of a small battery pack. Matches and lighter, keeping waterproof container or sealed plastic bag. This is gonna go more into the uh, major disaster area where you need to make fire to survive. You need to be really careful that you have the proper conditions, the proper environment to make a fire. Um, you know, and that means that it's 
I'll probably do a whole video on that, but you can Google proper conditions for disaster, fire building, that kind of stuff, and in, in urban areas. Um, but with that said, you still need to have a lighter and some matches. Um, the Zippo lighters are really good. They will dry out, so you just have to make sure to have more lighter fluid or access to it. I really like the Bic lighters. You can get a pack of like, I think four or six or something for like a dollar or two at Walmart, or at least you used to several years ago. Uh, even if it, it's not that much more now, probably. And then also having some waterproof, windproof matches um, in separate containers, just so you don't have any issues. Um, and then you also want to have some kind of uh, fire starter. So you can buy this at REI. You can make it as a craft project. I like the egg carton with uh, dryer lint and then candle wax poured over it. It makes it a waterproof thing. They're super cheap to get, but you can also always go and get just the REI equivalent of that. Um, and, eat, and separate bags of each so that we don't have a, an issue of losing all those if you do. Uh, a whistle, this is a way to communicate because that's gonna go a lot further. This should really be like a Fox 40 or something that's really loud, no ball that can get lost or, or stuck or something or frozen. You want a really good whistle um, that, that's gonna work. A lot of backpacks, um, like Camelback and some other hiking backpacks, years ago um, started implementing them on the chest strap. So if you look down your chest strap, there's, there might be a little whistle there, especially on the kids stuff. There's usually a whistle on the buckle. So that way you have to just lean down and, and whistle. Reading glasses and sunglasses. Reading glasses if you need to be able to see for signing stuff or see what's going on in your phone to keep up with things. You want an extra set, probably an extra, extra set. Sunglasses, again, this goes back to the other stuff that I was discussing. You need to keep your eyes safe. So I would recommend safety sunglasses because if you're in a position where you're needing to use your kit, you wanna make sure you're taking every precaution necessary to not have to have um, you're not going to need medical care, right? And then safety glasses are just one more thing on top of that. And then safety sunglasses are another thing. Uh, document bag. Um, so we'll go over that in a second. Well, I'll, we'll go over my thing on that in a second. Um, add these items for evacuating by car. You may have to leave in a hurry to get to a safe place. Keep these supplies near your car. When it's time, grab them and go. One important thing here is um, where it says be able to grab stuff and go. I'll go over when I do my, what we've decided to do, but that can look very different based on your, your age group, your, you know, do you have a family? Are you single? It is very um, different on those different circumstances. All right, so roadmaps. Um, I've got one that I'll bring out uh, for the next video, but they have a small um, Ray McNally map and they have the big print ones. Just keeping one of those books in your car, they have one for the whole US. Um, it's just good to have, you know, when things are really falling apart as they can with, with any kind of natural man-made disaster, the chance of cell phone service getting overwhelmed is very high. And then the chance of data being restricted or cut off for um, for public safety to, to supersede that in the call system, uh, in the data system, is also very high. And it's just good to have a way, either offline maps on your phone, but again, phones can die. Um, you know, just making sure you have a paper way and know how to use the paper maps. That's a very foreign thing for many people these days. Car repair items, so tools, spare tire, tire patch kit and oil. Um, I really like keeping cars up to date on their maintenance. Um, at least most of the ones, most of the ones we have, one of them is pretty far behind. But just making sure you have a spare tire. If your vehicle doesn't have one of those, a lot of EVs today do not have spare tires. So just make sure you have like one of those slime kits um, that you can do a patch on. Um, something where you can be able to keep going. Uh, run flat tires are an option. The downside is they can be really rough on low profile tires. So I, I prefer the thicker sidewall. It gives you more cushion and it's just an option to go with. Food and water. Um, 
with this, you want to make sure you have a bathroom option because if you are evacuating with the rest of a million person city, the chances of being stuck in traffic are extraordinarily high. So it is good to snack and have water, you know, just drink enough to be satisfied, but also know an option to be able to go to the bathroom because that will come up when you're stuck in traffic. So just have a plan for that. Plastic plates, cups, utensils, um, because you know this is for your car scenario, so you won't have this, or you won't have a, a dishwasher, normal dishes. And these are things you can just put in your trash bag and just dump at your next spot. Tent, blankets, pillows. This could be different for different people. So um, I prefer if possible to stay in your car, it will be less comfortable than laying flat, um, but you have a hard shell around you if it's a storm and a tent is gonna take time to break down. So if you are truly evacuating, in my opinion, you wanna be able to have a way to um, get out of that situation quickly. And if you're staying in the car, like an RV with a pass-through, then you can hop in, crank it up, and, and just take off uh, for whatever is around that situation. Blankets, I think, are really smart. Um, we keep um, a wool blanket and a beach towel in my car at all times. And uh, there's so many different reasons for all those, but um, it's just a good thing. The wool blanket is fire resistant, the specific one we have. And um, it's just good stuff to have. A pillow seems a little overkill. Um, you can probably use a camping pillow if you're evacuating and just have this part of your, your kit if you need to. For your clothes, you wanna make sure you have really sturdy shoes and clothes. You wanna make sure that you have waterproof hiking boots of some kind or work boots. You wanna make sure that your, your, your pants and top are uh, wool or, um, well, wool, because that's gonna give you most options. Rain gear and tools. Uh, you wanna make sure you have a good, truly waterproof, breathable jacket, same with your pants. You wanna make sure you have a waterproof hat so your rain's just not running down into your stuff. Um, or a hood on your jacket. I like a hat just because you can still see what's going on around you. Books, games, toys. Again, this is gonna to go toward more of the younger group for the toys and stuff and games. But having, you know, some cards or Game Monopoly or something or, or just an iPad these days. You know, so there's just a ton of videos and stuff on it. Um, I'm a big fan of Audible. So I just, I like having a lot of different audio books on my phone. Before you leave home, fill your gas tank and check your spare tire. There are countless images of people trying to fill up their gas cans and cars leading up to a hurricane coming in. Don't be one of those people. It's a hurricane. So you definitely have plenty of warning. You don't need to get it while you're evacuating or the day or the day or two before. You know, get it days before when there's not a big rush. Um, and then again, your spare tire, spare tire kit. Take cash, checkbook, and credit cards. Um, I don't even think we have a checkbook anymore, but cash is really important. We like to keep. Um, we like to keep enough cash to do at least a month of bills um, with us on hand. And then uh, credit cards, you know, it's just good to have as emergency backup stuff. Call your family emergency contact. So it's gonna be kind of your onion thing, right? So you wanna call, you have, have a contact that is far removed from whatever the situation is. And that way everybody knows to call that person because where you are, the, the cell service, landlines, all that might be compromised um, or overwhelmed. And you wanna make sure that the person in contact is outside of that because they won't be affected most likely by um, struggling communications. Uh, charge your mobile phone. This is what goes back to what I was saying earlier is just keep it on charge and then it's always full. Um, and then while you're in the car, keep it on charge in the car, it's always full. Get a map of your route. This goes back to the map book that I recommended. Um, 
just know how to read it, know kind of generally where you're going to go, and also just go and do your route sometimes, you know, go and make a little family weekend trip of, of how do you get out of your, your big city that you're in. Add these items for sheltering in place. When staying home is your safest choice, add these items to your kit and stay tuned to the news. Smoke detectors with extra batteries. I really like the carbon monoxide and smoke detector uh, combination units. And I really like the ones that, sorry, it's really cold. <laughs> Starting to warm my hands up. Um, I really like the ones that can talk. So you can program it for you know bedroom, kitchen, living room. That way when it goes off, you're not trying to hunt for which one's beeping, it just says it if you have the remote ones. If you have a house tide system, then that's obviously gonna be on the panel. Uh, carbon monoxide detectors, same thing. You wanna make sure those are in close relation to any of the gas or cooking areas. Uh, don't use camp stoves or grills inside. That's, that's a big thing. Fire extinguisher. Um, I really like the nice big fire extinguisher in the kitchen. It, it's a central spot or having one in the garage. I also really like, I did a video on one a long time ago. You can get one of these, um, I think it's Amorex, the water extinguishers that you just fill the garden hose and you use a bicycle pump if you want to fill up the pressure. And it's a pressurized water extinguisher that's reusable long term. Um, and then also the smaller extinguishers for, you know, kitchen and stuff. And just for, just so I know I say it, don't spray your extinguisher at a grease fire, put a lid on it, or, or put some kind of, um, you know, baking soda or something on top of it. If you spray a grease fire in your kitchen or anywhere else you might be camping or something, if you spray it, it is going to spray that grease, which is basically your liquid fuel like gasoline or diesel, and spray it over your cabinet, spray it over you. It, is, it turns into a really bad day really fast as opposed to a burnt cabinet. So just know that's, um, just don't use a fire extinguisher on grease fires. Plastic sheeting and duct tape to seal windows, the doors, windows, and air vents for contaminated air or to build an emergency shelter. This goes back to um, those big thick mill construction bags, why, they're, why I think they're so good. All right, I promise we're getting close. First aid kit. Suggested items for inclusion. Two compressed dressings, five by nine, 25 band-aids, different sizes, first aid tape, antibiotic ointment, um, hydrocortisone ointment, pain relief such as aspirin, ibuprofen, or acetaminophen, instant cold packs, two pair medical gloves, non-latex, this is for allergies, oral thermostat, scissors and tweezers, two roller bandages, different widths, two elastic bandages, 10 sterile gauze pads, different sizes, two triangle bandages for making slings, and a first aid instruction booklet. Again, this goes back to knowledge of knowing how to use the stuff. Um, if you're wanting to just get a kit for your house, there are numerous ones out there. Um, REI has some good options. Galls, G-A-L-L-S, has some wonderful stocked trauma bags. I've used theirs for the volunteer firefighting stuff for, eons and uh, they're really good. They're expensive, but you get what you pay for. And um, there's just several others, but just do your research to make sure that you have some ones you like. On my site, sfmpro.com, if you go to the recommended sites, I think, um, there's a medical section and I've got several different brands that are on there that I personally use or I know people that I trust have used and they're really good. Emergency documents. Imagine how hard it would be after a disaster if you couldn't prove your identity or if you didn't have access to your bank account. Avoid difficult situations by making copies of your important documents and keeping them in a waterproof bag. Include the following items. Current photo ID, driver's license, birth record, social security card, passports. Um, always keep your social security number separate from other documents to decrease the risk of identity theft. Current photos of family members in case you get separated. With the photos, one thing that I, I've learned uh, that I've had to kind of, as my you know lessons learned as I uh, have a growing family, is 
the picture of the younger kids <laughs> needs to be updated probably every year. And it's super simple. We keep ours um, in several places in a specific folder that we have across different items. But um, that main folder is just the pictures of all the immediate family members. And it's usually within a year or two, or with our daughter who's younger, it's within that year. And an easy way to do that is just when you get your school pictures, just take one and then copy and paste it into that folder. Health insurance and prescription cards. I know like myself and a lot of others, we just have it on our phone. Um, you still wanna make sure you have that information written down somewhere in, uh, in your emergency binder or folder, whatever it is you do. Medical records, medications and dosages. As you get older, I'm having to learn this, you need to make sure that list is updated, more importantly, across the health systems. So for us, we have Texas Health, that's one of the systems we have here. There's Baylor, there's, you know, um, they're all over the country, there's world, there's different ones. But through my chart, which is what a lot of these different health institutions use, you need to make sure to log in there and set up an account and make sure your medications are accurate because if something happens you're in that that health system and you know that's who's running a disaster area or something they can still pull up your information and you want to make sure that's accurate and that it's not wrong because they're going to give you medications based on that list or they could so just make sure that's up to date also Phone numbers for family, friends, doctors. Uh, I know we have all this in our phones. Phones can die, break, that kind of stuff. Or EMP, you know, that there's an option there. So um, on those things, just make sure in that book that you're making, you have kind of a title page on one of those main pages and you have a list of your numbers and names and addresses is my preference. Bank account information, same thing. Phones, computers, you, you could, theoretically have an issue, you wanna make sure that you have that written down, like your um, your routing number and account number in your bank, um, just so that information's all there. Wills, um, and this goes with other stuff, you know, advanced medical directives, those kind of things. You wanna make sure you have a, a paper copy with you on that stuff. Insurance documents, same thing. You wanna make sure you have hard copies of this information because if you're going to evacuate, you might not have your uh, paperwork. Deeds, leases, mortgages, just so you can prove residency and, and you have other information. Same thing, titles, insurance, leases, loan documents. Um, that's all just really good stuff to have. The physical of in this binder or whatever you're making that's safely secured, but also just written down somewhere else. And scanned also in that same thing. Inventory of household possessions and their value. Take photos of every room, every drawer, every closet. I think it's really important to do this, um, if not yearly, then maybe every couple of years. And it doesn't even be anything crazy. You just go through with your phone and then just take a picture of each wall, what's on each wall, like they're saying the drawers, you pull them out and just take a quick picture of each one. Bathrooms, attic, garages, outside of your whole house, up on the roof, you know, what does that look like? Um, your vehicles outside, inside, inside the cabinets and stuff. And then just take those and just put them in a folder. You know, I mean, you're probably gonna have, who knows, you know, 10 to 50 pictures. We just stick them in a folder and just title it, you know, house, car, whatever, whatever the year is. And then just update it, you know, whenever you get a chance to. And that way if you do leave, it's not you trying to, the insurance company is not having to guess if you're telling the truth and you won't forget something that you might've forgotten to list on a damage document. Backup computer files on a USB drive, um, yes, very important. But two, super, super important, I'm a big fan of the Apricorn, uh, I think it's Apricorn, thumb drives that have a physical uh, keypad on the thumb drive. The reason I like those is if someone steals it, uh, at, after 10 tries, you can set it to wipe the whole drive because you don't wanna be in a situation where you just have an open uh, open drive that is taken and then someone just pops in and takes everything. You need to have some kind of security on that. And when you're dealing with these kind of documents, it is super important to have that. 
Um, copies of important keys. So what we like to do is have a couple different key sets and we've got them labeled. So we've got, you know, backup set for here, backup set for there. And that way we can just grab it and we know we have the stuff with us. Utility bills to prove where you live. Um, for a couple of reasons, one of them is in some situations they'll set up um, roadblocks but to reduce looting. So you want to make sure that when you get there that you can show um, uh, you can show your your residency and get through those roadblocks. People with disabilities and those with access to and functional needs. Think about your day-to-day -day needs for independence. Plan now for your health away from home, medi label medical equipment with your contact information. So as you get older, um, or if you just need one you know, now for wheelchairs, walkers, and canes, you wanna make sure it's labeled with your name on it. it just, it's gonna save stuff later. I'm a big fan of putting a specific kind of tape pattern with some different colored tape. Um, the thin half inch gaff tape, that's cloth tape with different neon colors. I really like because you can put your own marker on it and you can tell from far away that it's yours. Or you can tell someone, because it's gonna be, not many people use that neon gaff tape and it's just an easy option to say, hey, that two stripe pink thing over there is mine. And it's like, oh yeah, there it is. Cooler with cold packs for medications. Um, it's gonna go back to the same thing. You wanna make sure if you have meds and need to be refrigerated, how are you gonna do that? Extra medications and dosages, like we discussed before. Copies of prescriptions and medical alert tags, just like we discussed before. Food for special diets, again, if it needs to be refrigerated, how are you gonna do that to keep them cool? Medical supplies, oxygen, glucose, we've, we've gone over that stuff before. Hearing aids, extra batteries, we've gone over that before. Communication devices, that could be something if you, uh, if you require a device to, to speak for you, you need to make sure whatever is required for that, that you have those, those supplies. Supplies and documentation for service animals. Shelters and areas don't want to get an influx of people saying it's just a service animal. If you truly have a service animal, you want to make sure that it's documented, not just not just with a tag, um, but that you have actual you know paperwork documentation. And then pet supplies is the final section. I promise. Uh, three day supply of pet food again. I think a week, and then uh, pet medications and first aid. You'll want to have uh, pad protection for a dog's pads or if you wear those little boot stuff, extra little boots. Um, vaccination records, again, this is for, you know, long term. Sorry, there's some dogs going crazy behind me. Uh, crate or carrier may be required in shelters or where you spend the night. So you just want to make sure that your animal's crate trained and that you do have its crate with you. Um, Leashes and toys, again, this is for entertainment for the dog to get him out and run around and to keep the dog attached to you or cat or whatever. Cat litter and box and then photo in case pets are lost. All right, I know that was a really long um, thing, but uh, 46 minutes, That was that's what my screen recording just said. So I'll wrap it up here, um, but the next video is going to be what we do as a kit, as a family. So uh, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you can use this to be better prepared. Have a great day.